Hello everyone, this is Jean from Palmer Art Zone. I'm doing another little video for you today. We're going to have a quick look at painting water. This is a, perhaps an improver's level rather than a beginner's level session. Uh, but have a go, see how you get on and post your images on the page. If you need any individual help, just ask my advice online, go on to Palmer Art Zone and I can even do you an individual demonstration online if you need some help. So we're going to have a look at a couple of images first of all and uh, some of these are very simple, some are a little bit more complex but this one here is quite a simple representation of water. Essentially when we're painting water we're painting the reflections of sky or hills, whatever is around the water. In this case it's a simple reflection of light in the sky and this movement here through the water is created by some very simple wet on dry brush strokes and a little bit of pen work. It's amazing how the brain can read these marks as being the horizontal plane of water. So we have a look at another image. Another very simple representation of water. Here we have some simple strokes horizontal strokes wet on dry the brush is held at a low angle I can tell that because we've got some little breaks in the paint when we hold the brush at a low angle we just catch the paper surface so we're picking up some of the texture from the paper it's quite a good idea whenever you're painting water to paint it on a rougher paper such as a cold pressed or a rough watercolour paper that natural texture in the paper really helps mimic the effect of water so we'll have a look at a couple more. So this one's a little bit more complex. Here we're looking at reflections in water and the process for this one is that the artist will have wet the water and painted the reflected colours as an undercoat damp on damp. In the foreground here we have some damp on damp strokes which represent ripples. I know they're damp on damp because they've got a soft edge to them and the artist will have used slightly denser paint to achieve the shape without it bleeding too far. Once dried off the artist has gone back in and worked wet on dry probably with a flat brush to create these ripples here. Again I know it's wet on dry because it's got a hard edge. If you don't know what some of this terminology is have a look on the initial video that we did for beginners, Absolute Beginners Watercolour Number 1. And here we have another subject. Again, the artist has initially done an undercoat of damp on damp reflections. They've left some of the water area dry. In other words, they haven't wet the whole surface when they were putting that initial undercoat on. They have just wet the paper in sections and left some of the white paper as light catching on the water. Once that initial damp on damp undercoat is dry, the artist has gone back in, this time with a round brush, and painted some ripples wet on dry. So we're just focusing on the water today and I've already done a little example here where I've put an undercoat on the water and we're going to put some ripples on top. Now the rest of the pictures that I do I'm going to just show you the brush strokes for various different ways of representing ripples. So you'll just need to experiment with your different brushes and you'll need a round brush and a flat brush. So round brush, this is a nylon size 6, goes to a nice crisp point, it's round and a flat brush this is about a one and a half centimetre brush, looks like that. So they're really useful, the flat brushes, for painting ripples. So I've done a damp on damp undercoat. I'm working on a hot pressed paper, but I would recommend, as I say, that you normally work on a cold pressed or a rough paper. So I'm going to put in some ripples just coming across the surface here. I'm holding the brush on the metal part and I've got the brush at about a 45 degree angle. The point of the brush is up to the top of the paper and I'm really just catching the paper surface. So in the distance, as a general rule in painting, 
we put fewer ripples and as we come forward we come darker depending on the image but we generally become darker so that we get a sense of perspective so you'll notice I'm just using my brush in a sweeping fashion. There's actually no movement in my wrist. I'm just working left to right, catching the paper surface. And all we're really doing is giving a little hint of the fact that this is ripples on water. Your brain doesn't need much more information. So we could build a second coat when these were dry. So I don't initially jump in with very dark colour. I just build a little bit more colour wet on dry. So that's an example of how normally we put an undercoat on and then we add our ripples on top. You can of course paint straight onto white paper if you've got water that is catching a lot of light. Leaving the gaps between the ripples will give you a really good effect. You can also use more than one colour. I'm just using blue here, but if you're painting something like a canal scene where you've got a lot of reflected colour in your water, you could easily jump your brush from one colour to another as you paint. So you're painting these ripples with different colours running through them. So just pay attention to how I'm using the brush now. I've got the brush pointing upwards. I'm sliding my hand, my whole wrist goes A to B across the paper and it's long sweeping strokes. I'm just tickling the paper surface, absolutely only just catching the paper surface. Put a little seagull in so that you can recognise it as water. You can put a little boat in at the top. So just go a bit darker in the foreground. So it's about this mixture of letting some ripples flow together and others being more separate. So that is a dragged stroke that you should be mimicking there. Now we'll drag with a flat brush. The brush is fairly wet but I am taking the drip off just on the edge of the palette. We'll go underneath this one. So I suppose the only difference really is that you get a slightly um, more defined mark, crisper mark with the flat brush and you also get the chance to create quite fine strokes as well as if you apply pressure to the brush you can do thicker strokes too. So you can even do something as simple as that image we saw in the first picture where we were just doing some ripples across an area of water just a movement mark. So now I'm going to move on and show you how to do some choppy water. This time I'm going to use the brush at a slight angle. So the blade edge of the brush is pointing towards my shoulder and I'm only going to use the corner of the brush. So as I work I'm going to do very shallow U shapes and I'm swinging the brush backwards and forwards. What we do is we make a row of ripples and then we drop down slightly and work back across, back and forth. Again, I let some of the ripple marks merge because otherwise you'd have a lot of separate marks and you won't get this effect of the horizontals making the water look as though it is lying down. Now you don't want to make a lot of marks which are all dashing about all over the place. We essentially keep working across the paper horizontally at all times. Just occasionally I'll leave a bigger gap. So I think you can see that mimics the effect of ripples quite well. So as I say, this time the brush is on a little bit of an angle pointing towards the corner rather than the point of the brush up. We'll try the same thing with a round brush. Got the brush quite wet and I just take the drip off on a tissue. I'm going to point the brush up to the top of the paper. And again, just using the round brush in this case actually makes a slightly tidier mark. So it's worth just experimenting what works for you. Just use the brush that works for you. Again, in this case, I've got the brush roughly pointed up towards the top of the paper 
I'm swinging back and forth, letting some of the marks merge together rather than lots of separate marks. If you do lots of separate marks all in one di direction, you'll get something like that. So. Now it's worth saying that you can also go back, once this is completely dry, you can go back and add some darker touches over the top. Now the comb brush we need to use a little bit drier. I think this is a fantastic brush, I'll just explain what it is in a moment. So it is a brush which splits at the end, hence the name. So the little hairs split rather than clumping together. All brushes will naturally want to spring together. So every so often you may have to split it with your finger. You can get different sorts of coma brushes. Some have a little bit more of a split between them. Some are more tidy. Have a look online. Rosemary and Co brushes are very good and Ken Bromley. And if you can possibly buy from your local store at this time, I'm sure they'd be very grateful. So I'm going to now do some comb brush work. So if I use the brush a little bit on its side, you'll see that even on this relatively smooth paper, it starts to catch the paper surface and pick up a texture. I think that works really well. Just straight on the white paper, you could put an undercoat on but it works really well just straight on the white paper. So again, checking that my brush is splitting, I'm using slightly denser paint. I'm just gonna show you. It's not really puddling, that's a sign that it's denser paint. And I'm using the brush relatively dry. By that I mean I've dampened it, dried it off on the tissue gently, and just picked up the minimum of paint. So now I'm going to swish with the brush like we were doing earlier, making those soft, U shapes. Sometimes I'm using just the corner of the brush and other times I'm using the full width of the brush. So we can move across making horizontals as we did before and we can also go back over areas so we could work back over areas and build up a bit of tonality. I think it makes lovely movement effects. Now sometimes I'm going to use the top edge of the brush so I'm not always using the corner, sometimes I'm using the top and that would just fill an area in a little bit more because we're using the tip to push the paint into the texture of the paper. So coma brush, I think it's great brush to use for um, all things watery. It just catches the paper in such a nice way and gives you that broken texture. So if I point the brush up to the top of the paper now and just do the same movement that we did with the round and the flat brush, you'll see the sort of effect we get. So I'm just doing those little choppy waves, going back and forth. So I'd say it gives a slightly more irregular mark. Now the brush does lift off, so try not to scribble with the brush. The brush does swing off the paper with a pendulum like mark. So it lifts off rather than keeping it down on the paper. So the end stroke lifts off. Again, once this is dry, you could easily work back into this. So now we'll just see what we can produce if we roll the brush over the surface. We can create a little bit of the effect of a wave rolling over. Now I'm dabbing with the corner of the brush and then I'm going to pull out from underneath that wave just again going back to the ripple stroke. So the secret with doing the, the wave is that we don't fill the entire wave in. You only pull a few little movement strokes over the top of the wave, try and make them all different lengths like that. Then you're leaving a gap and you're dotting with the corner of the brush. And then you're going back to the ripple stroke, which could be flat ripples, 
so that's pulling in that direction or it could be choppy ripples where you're using a slightly curved stroke as you go again once that was dry you could put a bit of deeper color underneath the wave and you just need to keep checking that the brush is staying split like that i hope you find that useful some basics on painting ripples with different brushes have a look on our page palmer art zone for various different projects